it says pause recording now, so I'll assume that means yep. oh, there's a little light at the top. That's little light. Yeah, yeah. So we are live. So if you're watching, this is my first time. Stephen's done it a few times before um, as as the host. Um, and Stephen introduced me to Blab a few weeks ago or 10 days ago, something like that. Yep. And I've watched one or two and I thought that's a good idea. And uh, Stephen's obviously very enthusiastic about it because he seems to be doing them all the time that's that's very true i mean it, it's a, a wonderful medium uh british backed and um i'm all for it good so what i'm hoping to this to be the beginning of is is a series of interviews which explores the tools that people use to do their trade a lot of the time we see their output we see um testimonials from their clients we see client stories what they did with their client but we don't have a really good understanding of how they've achieved that inside their shed. And so right. what I'm trying to do here is to get behind the facade that we all know, and whether it's their website or their products and service, whatever it is, I want to find out what they've been doing inside the shed to make that all happen. So hopefully there will be a recording and you'll be able to watch this after the show. And it's, there's a little red light up there, which seems to look good. Uh, please join in now by firing questions in the chat window or joining us live on air. We can open a seat. I'm sure Stephen will tell me how to do that later on. Um, so let's get going on the sort of serious interviewing bit now. So today I'm talking with Stephen Hill Healy, who's on my right on the screen here. Uh, he'll be on your right as well. And most of my interactions with Stephen have been online over the last 10 years, mainly inside something called Academy and then on Facebook and in a group on Facebook called Prospect Networking. Uh, but we have jointly and remotely organized events and had some fun over the past few years um, using other tools like Skype and so on. Um, and we've got lots of people together occasionally, haven't we, Stephen? We have, yeah. We, we organized the uh, open networking days. Yeah. Yeah. Back, back in the day and we've known each other about 10 years yeah. online and offline it's even distant past now this stuff isn't it um, yeah history a time i even had lunch with you in birmingham and you did tell me what you did but right I, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully today you're going to remind me but yeah okay i suppose so first that... of all Stephen, what's your trade what do you do right uh basically my my first job uh of two is that i am a software designer and I design software for manufacturers, uh, and that's everything from finished goods in through the production processes to uh, tracking and all the quality control. And then in the final analysis, delivery to customer, invoice to customer, and the invoice goes to accounts. So what we're controlling is customers, suppliers, and stores. That's the manufacturing side. And the second side we have is distribution. Distribution, you don't have to make anything. What you're actually doing is buying and selling. But it's important that you buy and sell at the right prices. And uh, a lot of people I work with actually import from uh, the Far East, repackage in this country, and then sell in this country in cutthroat markets where the margin is between 1% and 3%. And you obviously want to get the 3 Many times you'll end up with the 1%. So my distribution systems tell people live how much they're making on the day. So they don't have to wait for a set of accounts at the end of the month. They know day by day exactly how much their gross profit is. Now to do that, I uh, I have a toolkit. You can, um, just, just before you go on, uh, yeah. who are these customers? These customers are spread uh, throughout the country. Uh, they are small to medium companies, up to 20, 25 million turnover. Um, and one, let's say about one to 25 million turnover. And uh, been uh, customers for many years. Uh, the original system I designed was back in the days of DOS. And we brought it from DOS to Windows, from uh, DBI, which is a small database, to SQL Server today. And the customers have grown with it. So and uh, installations is bespoke or right okay the the core of any any system is about 80 percent standard and then 20 percent bespoke and the bespoke makes all the difference because um everybody's got their own way of doing things 
Um, so it's important that things like uh, invoice layouts, delivery note layouts, credit note layouts, uh, internal documentation are all in that company's image. Uh, so you've got a standard image across the board. So documentation is one side, which is definitely personalized. And the other thing is that, that people have different ways of calculating profits. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's important as well. And the workflow it varies from company to company. So you want to make it fit. Um, one of the systems we had uh, was for pharmacists. And basically, uh, it was a distribution center. And in the morning, they phone up all the pharmacists and chemists and say, what would you like? And they then take the orders. The orders go into the warehouse, picking lists are printed out. Staff go around the warehouse collecting the stock, come back, uh, zap the barcode, and it then creates an invoice to go with the goods, to go out with the pharmacist, sort of two hours after it's been ordered. And the delivery goes out uh, shortly afterwards. So that's a real-time system. So between uh, 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock, you couldn't have a single problem. Mm -hmm. Because if you did, some pharmacist would not get his drugs, and the customer, which in this case is a patient, would not get their prescription. So it's very important it run like clockwork, which is why uh, everything I do these days is based around SQL Server, which is a Microsoft product. As one of my colleagues says, uh, it's the best thing Microsoft have ever done. <laughs> forget Windows, forget any operating system. SQL Server is the Rolls Royce of databases. Simple as that. But, well, somewhere inside that massive company, they must have their own database. And if it doesn't work, they wouldn't supply, would they? <laughs> they That's right. Goods. So true. it's rather core to them, I would have thought. Yeah. 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 That's true. It's, 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 it's core to, to their operations. It controls everything they do on a day-to-day -day basis. It maintains the stock levels. Uh, it does all the invoicing. It looks after the buying. Um, so a whole range of things that are taken care of within the system itself. No, but what I, what I was meaning is the SQL Server must be called to Microsoft's own internal business. Well, yes, they must run their own databases on their own database system. Yes. But one assumes that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I can't send them an Oracle, really. No. Can <laughs> so that's, perhaps that's why it, why it is good, because if it, if it wasn't good, Microsoft wouldn't yeah. be running. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Um, but it is the, the, probably the best Microsoft product that uh, has ever been released. And they work hard on it. I mean, the, the current version is, is Microsoft Azure, mm -hmm. uh, which is the database in the cloud. So rather than having it on the server uh, in the offices, in the, web, in the factory, the server is actually virtual. And it's in the clouds, and your database is stored in the clouds. And uh, you have on your desktop a program, looks like a Windows program. And from an operational point of view, from the user's point of view, it is a Windows program. Uh, but the data it's accessing is actually um, up in the clouds. And that is a beautiful piece of kit. Mm -hmm. uh, because for, I uh, got uh, both the production system and the distribution system running on uh, Microsoft Azure. And they are fast. They are faster than a land-based um, land server. Far faster. Right. The only problem we have in the UK is that our internet is not good enough. Um, and whilst at the moment people are quite willing to put the CRM systems um, into the clouds because they're not crucial, uh, sort of the, the the infrastructure is crucial. And if that fails, then there's stuff. So uh, most people today will have uh, a server with a backup going 24-7, uh, and they know where it is, and they know it's not going to fail, and they know it can't be cut off. Because imagine that you've got 30 staff all happily using the system to get a big shipment out, and your internet provider goes down. Yep. And it could be for any reason on earth. It could just be uh, a slow connection, which uh, certainly in some of the rural areas of this country is true, mm -hmm. or it could be uh, that it's been attacked. So businesses do not have the same sort of faith at the moment in uh, in the clouds as uh, in Lambo systems. But it will come. It will come eventually. And we're ready for it when it does because Microsoft have uh, trained us all up into using Azure with our own free training courses 
and uh, I've done it and I've proved it and I know it works. I'm happy with it, but I couldn't and on heart say to any of my businesses, what are any potential users, uh, go for it because I can't guarantee it will be 24 okay. seven. And if you can't guarantee that you know, as a business, you can't do it. So, so what's we like to, box? what do you use to make all that happen? Right. Okay. This, this, can, you, can you press uh, lock seat? Uh, down the bottom there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now that makes us slightly bigger. Yes. And I'm just going to go into the background and I am going to change. Uh, hang on. No, that's not. <sighs> I've done that somewhere else. Like that. All those. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just give me a second. Bear with me a second. That's fine. Um, right. Can you see you can you see on your screen? Uh, it won't be totally clear, but uh, hopefully you can see what is the customers there. Yeah, let's scroll that down. Can you see a customer screen? Yeah, but we can't. I can't read them. No. OK, this is it, I'll just talk about it uh, just quickly. This is the sort of thing that uh, the system does. Uh, we've got the customer system. We've got a list of customers. We can search by customer. Uh, we can search by company. And if we double click on a company, it brings up the invoicing module. So what you have is a desktop system like this, which is designed to be easy to use, responsive, and uh, to do everything a customer could actually want. And that goes, let's shrink that, that goes for taking orders, sales invoices, and credit notes. Mm -hmm. right, I'm going to come back now to me. Okay, so that's the sort of that's what it sort of looks like. Just a brief feel yep. of uh, what it looks like. Now to do that, uh, back in the day, I used to write for for DOS DOS programs. Yeah, and with DOS programs, you had choice between BASIC and Pascal. Mm -hmm. I learned how to code in BASIC, but I love Pascal. Pascal became Visual Pascal which is Delphi. So my main tool is uh, Embarcadero Delphi. It used to be called Ball and Delphi. And uh, it is a system for designing software, the likes of which we've just seen, where you can design, first of all, the database. We've talked about SQL Server. If you're going to have a database, you've got to design it first. And um, you design your customers, yeah, names, addresses, etc. suppliers, names, addresses, stock item numbers, descriptions. OK, uh, just to give an example, customer uh, information has about 100 different bits of information in there, not just name and address. Likewise on purchases and even more on stock. So you design the database, but that you, you could use that like a spreadsheet. There's no problem. If you wanted to link Excel to that SQL Server database, you could do it. But it wouldn't make any sense because you'd be dealing with large tables. And when you want to uh, use a system, you want a screen uh, which you can understand. Uh, so the first thing that uh, we do is design the screen layouts. Then we just, having designed the screen out layouts, we then link the database. And having linked the database, uh, we can then compile the program and we've got a data entry system. So you can enter customers, you can enter suppliers, you can enter stock. Um, and then we need to build a reporting system that you can get your reports out and get your invoices out. So that's all done in Delphi. And that's Delphi with SQL Server, accounts for a, quite a, a large amount of the work. You, you either go, your options, you could go Visual Basic, but uh, being a Pascal man, I'm, I'm with Born Delphi. So that's, that's a sort of core tool that you have for producing and managing your databases. Um, yeah. What do you that have alongside that? Ah, good question. Okay, uh, now you've opened the floodgates because designing the program uh, using the uh, Delphi uh, system and SQL Server is only part of it because you've got to design the databases. Now, uh, SQL Server comes with the SQL Server Management Studio and you could use that, but I prefer to use a little program called TMS Data Modeler and that allows me to design my tables and create my SQL. Okay. You can create SQL by hand. So if you wanted to say, select the name from customers, you go select name, 
mm -hmm. from customer and it would do that but when you've got 100 fields you can't do it that way doing it by hand you go mad so um you want to uh, to be able to model a table so i've got a data modeler uh, which handles that okay now we said earlier 80 percent of the uh, system is bespoke so i need some way of making sure that customers are happy with the screen displays before i release the software so you just said then 80 percent is bespoke i thought you'd said so it's 20 so 20 yes right okay. yes nobody's what nobody's watching us thank you for the correction yeah it says it's 20 20 percent is bespoke so i've got to have a way of actually notifying my customers uh of what the screen designs look like to make sure that they're happy with them yeah. so i use uh two programs one is clarify now clarify is very simple uh it allows you to take a screenshot of your software uh, it then allows you to comment on the screenshot so you can overlay text onto the screenshot you can overlay numbers onto the screenshot mm -hmm. so you can actually describe what's taking place in the screen right so it's a very handy tool for uh documenting the system prior to releasing it um, it's also very handy it's second use is if somebody has a problem with a live system they can uh, say where the problem is mm -hmm. and send you a screenshot you can replicate that screenshot uh, in uh, clarify and then you can type in the solution to their problem um, and they get a graphic answer right okay well, now email sorry rather than a three-page email oh yeah and pictures with a thousand words so you, you've got a, you know, a picture of the screen they send you a picture of the problem you send a picture of the remedy yeah. uh, and that's that's the way it works so when people send pictures to you obviously gmail comes into play mm -hmm. so gmail is an important part of my day right. but i get over 200 emails a day yeah. and uh only a small percentage of those are in terms of business <coughs> so my next program is one that I wrote, uh, which is in actual fact uh, called My Message Hub. Mm -hmm. uh, my Message Hub's main job, as far as I'm concerned, as well as storing my messages, is that if there is a message from a customer or someone who's important to me, it will send a push notice to my phone. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know within seconds if somebody's got a problem. Wherever in the world I am, I get a push notice to my phone without checking my email and I know where it's come from and I know who's got the problem and then I can I can take action I mean I've worked uh, from um, ooh, Lanzarote I mm -hmm. uh, got a message on the phone there and then went quickly on the tablet linked into the next program I use which is log me in because uh, I use log me in for remote support so using log me in I was able to access the, the uh, server in Birmingham and was able to repair the problem without leaving my deck chair <laughs> sun lounger sorry you, you had the yeah. umbrella i imagine seeing the screen oh yeah sunlight would have been more difficult yeah um so yeah i mean the, the clarify is the one that i use to document the system and to sort out people's problems gmail is necessary for for contact and my own program my message of keeps me in contact with people mm -hmm. um, then I've got a couple of uh, utilities this is quite a you, when you sent me the message last night outlining what you were going to talk about today I thought right okay that's going to take 10 minutes no worries I'll just say Delphi and SQL Server and, and that'll be it but then I looked around and I, I discovered that I, I use a whole lot more um, and I'm not going to bore everyone but I'll go just quickly go through them uh, I also in addition to the two pieces of software we've talked about uh, which is the manufacturing distribution which are my mainstay mm -hmm. uh, i mean basically i sell the software and then there's a, an annual maintenance contract on that software uh, but in addition to that i have a, a series of programs which are in for consumers rather than businesses mm -hmm. and the first of those is astrantia mm -hmm. and astrantia is a dual language browser and the basic principle is uh, you can read the French newspaper on the left-hand side of the screen and a live translation on the right-hand side of the screen, and it can be French, German, Italian, Spanish, or anything. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to do that, I've got to be able to send software out to customers. Uh, I can't install it on their machines. So the next piece of software I use is a piece of software called Deploy Master. 
and that takes my programs mm -hmm. and it uh, adds in all the documentation and I can then send out a zip file to end users. And we've done that with Estrantia and we've now got 40 people happily using that on a daily basis with, with good feedback. So Deploy Master helps me do that. Um, now, Software House, um, we've got a lot of code. My main system runs to half a million lines of code, which I haven't typed them all, but I've typed a lot of them. So backup is crucial, because mm -hmm. uh, if anything happens, then uh, I've got to be able to restore very quickly. So the next thing I use is SugarSync. Now I chose that old roll the others because it's discrete in the background and it does incremental backups and I can go back to a version from 10 days ago if I need be. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, a, you know, it's reliable and steady. Uh, it's not, uh, I, I do have it, obviously, other backups as well on Google Drive, but I would rely on SugarSync as opposed to, uh, to Google Drive. Uh, the other programs I use are basically for keeping in touch with people. Mm -hmm. um, Skype, I've got customers who won't email me. They're happier to use Skype. So I never get a Skype message uh, that they need support. Um, and uh, Zendesk, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the premier uh, online support solutions. Um, and that is basically uh, how I record all the problems that come in. Uh, that they sent to me. Mm -hmm. um, right. Okay. So that's a quick overview of, of the, the programs that I use and a little bit about what I do. Is, is there anything you've tried uh, which you've then ditched and would recommend no one else touches with a bar? <laughs> I'm a software guy. I recommend everybody's software. Um, well, I wouldn't touch with a barge pole. That's a. I don't... Also, uh, a shorter. But That's it. You've thrown me a curve there because uh, most of it, I tend I tend to uh, try software out before I actually pay for it and start using it. Um, so that's that's the way I go. I, I don't know of too many turkeys, really, uh, has to be said. I mean, I, I tell you once of a day when we when we all started with Delphi mm -hmm. um, along these the lines you're talking about, I suppose. In other words, I wouldn't do it this way now. Mm -hmm. Does that do you? OK, yeah. uh, when we when we first started, um, basically Delphi was um, the, the main structure, but it didn't have everything that you needed. So if you wanted a, an email component, a th third party wrote that. Mm -hmm. If you wanted a fax component, somebody else wrote that. If you wanted a reporting component, several people wrote that. So what you've got is a whole series of software houses all around the globe, all writing stuff which should fit together. Yeah. So when I first started uh, my first Windows version, I had components from about 80 different software houses. Mm -hmm. And it worked beautifully, yeah? yeah? But that was 80 different component sets. Today, I only use software from 12. Wow. Yeah. And some of those are duplicated as well. So the, the, in other words, I wouldn't today try all and sundry. I And you talk, you want you want a company uh, that's been around a while, and any Delphi company is crazy. So nowadays, you know, there's people around now that they're going to stay. And the other thing is price as well. Um, prices have gone up as people have dropped out, of course, and the market for the other vendors grows. Then uh, their prices have gone up. But even so, uh, to put together. Uh, because there's a program I'm, I'm conducting an orchestra and I've got different sections I just pull them in and use them as I need them. I, I've got it down to 12 components set. Mm -hmm. But I've got to say, I, I've got to be uh, the, the software brethren. I can't call any software crap. It wouldn't be good, would it? <laughs> okay. Um, in the last five years, what which tool, new tool, has made the biggest difference to the way you work? I think, uh, right, okay, in terms of that side of things, I think there are two. Uh, Clarify, we've already talked about. Clarify is a simple documentation tool, but yet so powerful. 
um, and it will allow you to document any screen layout. It then puts together all the screens. If you've got several screens that you're trying to display, it puts all the screens into a list. You document it, and what you're actually creating is a mini manual. Yeah. Now you can then from that you can then create a PDF, or uh, they've got a website which they host, and you can upload it to the website and just send people a link. So it's easy to use. You can deploy a PDF or a link to the website. The second uh, is from the same people, and that's called Screen Steps. Not mentioned it before. Screen Steps is Clarify's big brother, and uh, it was the first product that they released. And Screen Steps is Clarify with all the bells and all the whistles. So if you want to write a full-blown operations manual, and you want that to be online, and you want it to link into Zendesk for support, then Screen Steps is, is the way to go. And those two have basically changed the way that I I work and do documentation. I used to use, you remember the old Windows help files? Yes, vaguely, yeah. yes I, I used to create those. They're wonderful little things, pain to maintain. Uh, whereas screen steps, if you uh, alter any page, then just press one button and everybody's manual is updated, which is magic. You don't have to keep sending out HLP files. So in documentation, I would nominate uh, screen steps and, and clarify. Um, the other tool that's changed, uh, made life a lot easier over the last five years, I would have to say, I'm picking from my list here, uh, comes from the guys, my life, comes from the guys at Chilcat, uh, which you will not have heard of ever, uh, and you no need to, uh, but they produce the best POP3 and SMPT components ever. And if you want to uh, put email into your system, either to send or receive, then they've got an ActiveX component that rocks, and you just drop it into your system. A few calls to the component, and you've got an email system. So the guys at Shortcut Rock too. So those are my uh, mm -hmm. my best friends, as it were, um, and they're part of my uh, my orchestra. Um, yeah, because um, you need uh, in order to be effective. I mean, to write half a million lines of code as a one man software house is you couldn't do it on your own. So you need to get together the components that actually fit into the software. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I've done over the years. Yeah. So we, we've been inside your um, your shed a bit. Um, yeah. But I know that you're also involved with lots of groups. Um, yes. How mm -hmm. have those helped you and your business? How, how, how are they? They're uh, to talk it, aren't they? You wouldn't be doing what you're doing now. And living such a happy, relaxed life in devices if that group, those groups didn't exist. No, I would I definitely not be living. We've got Angelica online, haven't we? I would definitely not be living uh, such a relaxed and happy life if it hadn't been for networking. I mean, I, I, my day job uh, is programming and supporting the programs that uh, I've actually created. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do between 10 and 6 every yeah. day. Uh, but... Um, my the love of my life is social networking um and we've been connected through social networking for the last 10 years and uh i don't think that anybody uh we, we're now in a network society and it's easy for you and i to speak across the country or around the world at any time of day or night uh and keep in contact with people and that's what social networking has done uh in particular i i pay mention to academy i noticed you went to the black star dinner the other evening how was that oh right okay it was, Shh, it, i don't it, mention it was, you saw my comment probably somewhere else it was a a, a weird and wonderful evening um but it, yeah. it would be the same for how should we say any like-minded groups of academy getting together um after two or three years of not seeing each other uh, you they would yeah. all have fun regardless of yes. what they thought about uh, the wider groups right or each other <laughs> yeah all right well my, my my second uh tools of trade then must must be social networking and i, I know we we share this uh in the, the the networks that we're actually linked on uh the first network we're linked on of course is linkedin now i don't make any great deal of use for, of linkedin because all the the, the 
work I do is from recommendation. But it is a good place. It's a good business network, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I'm all my work is recommendation. So my social networking is purely social networking. Uh, I, that's why I enjoy it so much because I'm not trying to sell anybody anything apart from the Astrantia browser, so which is free. Your of course. social networking into your business. Yeah. But I mean, the. Mm. No, the the two. Uh, well, okay. Only insofar as the my consumer products are concerned. Uh, as far as the business products are concerned, then no. Uh, my I've got to be honest here, uh, and say that my customers don't even know what Facebook is. Wouldn't know what LinkedIn was, if you tried to explain it to them, and Twitter is well, just not in there. Um, most of the, the I live with I, I work with nuts and bolts guys and they do everything on a handshake and personal meeting and if they have to uh, mm -hmm. arrange a distributor in France they will fly off to Paris okay they will not uh, uh, go on Skype and Skype them they want to know in person so the, the breakdown that I'm coming from is where it is personal one-to-one -one and, uh, and not networking the world in which I live in day to day is, of course, networking. The people who so the two you. are separate. Um, uh, so that must be group using the people who, uh, Microsoft SQ. Uh, can you, can you can expand pieces, on that? And there must be forums where people share uh, information and advice and tips. And... I, in terms in terms of that if I if I have a question uh, I don't go to the books no I mean I, I go to as you quite rightly say I go online and get the answer mm -hmm. I question to Google and it takes me off to the requisite group so in terms of uh, my support uh, is 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 people but via the internet so I, if I've got a problem that I can't solve I will try my best to because that's that's my job is solving people's problems but if I can't, if it's something that's, that's annoying me, uh, then to me, the easiest thing to do is to type the, the, the question into Google and get an answer and uh, thank the people who provide it in the first place. Because there's, there's no, there are no new, uh, real new things in, in software. Uh, there are just different ways of doing things and, and we, we help each other. We act as a group and answer questions for each other. Uh, but basically the, the greatest thing online that I, I know of is the free um, courses provided by Microsoft, yeah. uh, which is brilliant. I mean, there's the Microsoft Partner Program, yes. Um, and there's also the SQL Server support, support which is absolutely brilliant. If I want to know anything, I can watch a video and uh, get get the answers as well. So I, I, I don't, uh, I mean, we're both members of Prospect Networking. Um, and I know there's only one of the coder in there, a true coder. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I don't want to. Perhaps two. Right. Uh, that would be Steve yeah. and Russell. Yeah. Who are coders? Um, so the, the, there's nobody within my networking group um, who's a, who's a SQL Server guy or a, a coding guy. If that's what you mean. Um, that that just doesn't. It's never figured in, in. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years now, and that's not figured. So I go online to get support, but I don't actually need. Um, I don't network with programmers. I can't think of anything. It's like networking with accountants. I used to be an accountant. And I would never, I never network with accountants, and I wouldn't network with programmers either. I mean, and there's a beautiful, there's some beautiful groups on Meetup. There's a Meetup uh, SQL guys in Swindon. I hope they don't watch this, by the way. But SQL guys in Swindon, another one in Bath, uh, and I, I get in with invites occasionally. But I, I couldn't, honest, uh, to talk shop. Um, no, not my cup of tea. I'd rather talk about anything question, else. But shop. And hopefully someone else um, will join in and ask some questions. Yeah. Um, what is the tool of your dreams? Okay. Where is the gap in your Oh, right. Okay. Um, now we've got to go back to the early beginnings of Windows. Okay. And Windows arrived and we had a decision whether to go DOS stay with DOS or to go to Windows. And at that time, our system integrated into Sage accounts. So if Sage went Windows, we had to go Windows, yeah? Um, 
and we had to do it ahead of them yeah. so that we could convert our customers over without any problems because you've got a, the manufacturing and the sales you've got to fit together. And somebody released this program, which was called the last one. And it's called the last one because it was the last program you would ever need. You would feed into it your databases and it would straight away create all your screen displays, do all the uh, background uh, coding for entering a new record, editing a record, deleting a record. It would generate all the reports you would ever need. And it was the last one, the last program you ever needed. And that would have been beautiful. Um, it didn't work. So my dream, my dream, which is why I still had a job, my dream program would be that somebody comes up with a new last one and you can give it your, uh, your databases and you can give it your rule set and it will generate the code for you. So if you want uh, a system which will uh, effectively build your invoicing for you, then you can just give it all the parameters and it will go off and do it. So a self-programming program. That's, that's my, my dream. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. I think coders are here to stay because everybody wants something different. And, um, you know, I mean, the, the, the code, there will always be a job for coding. It's never going to disappear. That's my prediction. I was going to say, my, not in my lifetime anyway. Uh, coders will be around for a long time to come. We're a necessary evil. Um, and supporting programs as well is very important too. I mean, you, if you buy a program and you buy a business program, we're talking here, not a, a personal program, but if yep. you buy a business program, you should buy it with support mm -hmm. so that you're covered. If anything goes wrong, you can get uh, support either on the phone or uh, over Skype or by log me in direct to your own desktop. Uh, support is, is essential for business programs. Um, that was it. Right, yes, so the last one, please. So that's Do it. Me. It's, it's all over. Thank yeah. you. Um, <laughs> well, I, I thought it was a good insight into... Uh, okay, well, that was good. You ...and how you use tools within your shed to make these things happen. Um, there only appears to be one person out there who could join in if they wanted to. On my screen. Uh, yes. Uh, but, and now Angelica told a little bird uh, about us, which is very kind. Uh, but she also told me that uh, if we <laughs> didn't ask us, she should be happy not to join. But some, some people have just joined in. If if you want to, uh, okay. oh, Blab was there for a, for a fleeting seconds. Yeah. All yeah. oh, right. Okay. They usually pop in and out to uh, to check on whether we're interesting or not. And if we're not interesting, then right. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know. Right. Uh, uh huh. Who is this? Shady. Okay. It's it's definitely your call. Uh, yeah. Oh, she said hi. Good. Hi, Shaley. Would you okay. like to? I don't need to type this in, do I? She's listening to me, I assume. Yeah. Well, if you, you've got a choice, you, 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 can you, like you see the in, uh, like tick and X? Oh, right. Oh, that's what that one she, is down there. She's that requested that. Come in. You're in. <laughs> yes. I, yes. Hello. I'm, Hello. I'm listening. Hi. Hi. Okay. How, could we, do you, how do you pronounce your name, Shirley? Hi. Thank Hello. You me. Shirley. Well, good evening and welcome. I, yeah. Thanksgiving uh, or uh, Christmas? I have no idea. It's a holiday, fun hat. I don't even celebrate Christmas. I, I just love the marketing. The marketing's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> um. But I saw you guys are doing a thing, and I was like, hey, let's see what's happening. Let's talk to new people and uh, see what crazy shenanigans is happening on the internet. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, I've been talking with Stephen, who's actually 
well, he, he qualifies for both things. He's both an old friend and an old friend. <laughs> oh. And, uh, about the tools of his trade. Uh, and he's been through that for the last uh, 40 minutes or so. So you've missed the core of the interview, I think. But uh, I, I saw that it was, it's was it been going for a little bit. So I understand. Yeah. Jump in at crazy times during yeah. the interview. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure it was fabulous. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, a bit of break up on Stephen's yeah. line, I think. Wow. You need to kick that other person off the um, internet, uh, Stephen. You need to kick that other person Sorry? off the internet. They're taking your bandwidth up. No, you're still Why, here. Have you, I have, you have gone to audio only now. I see the video. All oh, right. Okay. 